Welcome back to Glenville State to the Westmoreland Sports Network Halftime Show. And, of course, we'll have the first half stats and the scoring summary for you from the first half between Seton Hill and the Pioneers of Glenville State coming up in just a couple of moments as the Griffins close out the regular season. But first, we're being joined by Seton Hill University Athletic Director Chris Snyder. And, uh, Chris, first of all, where has the time gone? We're already talking about winter sports, and I feel like it was just last week we were in Reading uh, with the baseball team. The time is certainly yeah. flying by, isn't it? Sure it has. It's, I can't believe that we're uh, putting a bow on the fall season and uh, winter's underway already and uh, before you know it we'll be hopefully uh, talking baseball in the spring so it time sure does fly. And Chris how many years now for athletic director here at Seton Hill University? Uh, be nine years on April 1st. Well, congratulations. We'll throw a party for you on the first. April Fool's Day. That's right. <laughs> uh, Chris, a couple of things we want to get into uh, here today. But first, one of the questions that you've probably been hearing in your sleep, <laughs> the move to the PSAC, yeah. which uh, Seton Hill will be doing along with Pitt Johnstown beginning next year. First, before we talk about the benefit, uh, just kind of talk about the process and how it all went down and, and, and the administration's decision to join the PSAC. Well, it, Dan, it happened quick. Um, I was notified at our annual summer golf outing uh, for the Griffin Athletic Association, which was June 14th, 15th. Um, Dr. Boyle came to me and said, I need to speak with you. And the uh, members of the WVIAC, those that play football, had had a dis discussion saying they were looking to leave. And uh, Seton Hill said, well, we'd We'll listen to opportunities that may come along, and uh, that was on a Friday. On Monday, uh, Commissioner Murray reached out and said, hey, let's talk. So that got the wheels in motion, and so basically from the middle of June uh, through the rest of June and July, uh, we started looking and exploring our options, and then ultimately uh, you know, did our checklist and decided that if offered an opportunity to go to the PSAC, that's where Seton Hill would go. So uh, that's th the process. And we got it done by about the end of July, uh, first part of, or I'm sorry, end of August, uh, in going in right before Labor Day. So that's where we ended up going and uh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, it came together very quickly. And, and Chris, the second part of the question then is just how much it will benefit Seton Hill University. Obviously a very competitive conference, uh, not to slight the WVIAC, but we all know the PSAC, very competitive. Uh, just talk about the benefit of going to the PSAC. Well, I think there's a lot, uh, Dan. Uh, the PSAC is certainly a, an exceptional athletic conference uh, throughout Division II. Um, you know, certainly one of the largest conferences, but in a long, long history of success, uh, both on and off the field in terms of academic accolades for their student athletes and national championships and regional recognition. So a huge step up for Seton Hill. Um, in our athletic endeavors, but the advantages other than the name recognition of the schools that will be playing, certainly number one is geographic and travel. Uh, we'll be aligned in the PSAC West, so you know we'll be able to develop some rivalries, I hope, over time with nearby Cal State and IUP, and of course Johnstown's not that far down the road, and the Gannon and Slippery Rock and the Mercyhurst and Edinburgh. So uh, you know we're not taking four-hour trips into West Virginia or four and a half hours, whatever it may be. I, I think that uh, the missed class time opportunities will be less for our students. It's going to be an all-around good situation. It's going to force our coaches here to really step up their game um, in terms of recruiting quality student athletes that can compete at the level that the PSAC competes at. And I think it's going to be a benefit to them that we made this move. I think the high school athletes in the Western Pennsylvania and throughout the state, they all know those schools in the PSAC. So they're going to know that, hey, Seton Hill's competing against these people, you know. So it's going to ramp up their interest level, I think. Uh, and they're going to know the caliber of athlete that we're looking to recruit. And I think it's going to be a big benefit to our community here in Greensburg. Uh, you know, when we're hosting basketball games, you know, in the middle of the winter and we're playing IUP here in the McKenna Center or we're playing Slippery Rock or playing Cal, uh, the, the townsfolk, or they're going to know those schools. So they're going to come to the ball games more so as if we were playing Bluefield or Alderson Broadus. And it's not a slight against those two schools, but people in Greensburg probably haven't heard much about those schools. And you may, I mean, you may see local high school players more often playing for PSAC schools that are from uh, around here, so obviously they'll be able to kind of uh, adapt to that uh, as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And because everybody's going to know somebody in the community, oh, somebody, this such and such went to IUP, such and such went to here. So I think that's going to generate some interest. So I'm hopeful that uh, crowd support will be there from the community and uh, fill up 
up our gym and fields and, and so forth as we transition. So a um, lot of challenges, but um, you know, a lot of opportunities too. So we're looking forward to it. Our coaching staff's excited. Uh, our administration is excited. And I think it's going to be a real positive impact over the big long haul for our university. And don't go away. Right after this interview, we're going to play a clip actually from the interviews that we did after the press conference, which of course happened before the fall sports season with uh, Dr. Boyle and, and uh, Chris was there as well and the uh, Pitt Johnstown president was there as well. We had a chance we're going to play that for you right after uh, this interview. But, uh, Chris, I'm sure we'll talk about the move to the PSAC yeah. before uh, next year's sports season gets I'm underway. Sure. But I'm sure we will. I know you guys are very excited to do that. Um, let's talk about a couple of different things. Obviously, the fall sports season for you uh, just kind of wrapped up for most of the teams. Volleyball, uh, a very solid season. Um, we know that the cross-country team had another good year for, for boys and girls. John Bogert is going to be running in national, so he's right. still going. And the right. men's and women's soccer teams, uh, one just missed the playoffs, one was in the playoffs. Playoffs and and field hockey team too had a, a signature win against IUP and of course football team if we can start making some tackles and we can put some <laughs> points on the board yeah. but if we can uh, get better a little defensively but just kind of talk about the uh, fall sports scene as a whole this year. Well, the, the fall sports scene uh, was was a pretty good you know fall season for us. Uh, we had some pleasant surprises uh, starting you know with field hockey, big big win for our program. Uh, not only uh, you know beating IUP. Uh, but beating cuts down, you know, out there, uh, the field hockey uh, program, they had seven wins. Um, you know, obviously you'd love to have a lot more, uh, but um, that's the most we've ever had. And then you know, we've been in the PSAC field hockey, which is the premier league in the country in Division Two. So they've made a lot of positive strides uh, in that program. So I was thrilled to death with them. Um, cross country, a second and a third place finish in the conference, uh, disappointing in, by our standards uh, where we've been in the past, uh, but uh, we had some runners do a tremendous job. Jeannie Budos, you know, winning in a uh, walk-away fashion, basically. Only a sophomore. Only a sophomore to, to bring home the title on that side. And as you mentioned, uh, John Bogert going out to uh, Joplin, Missouri here shortly to run in the national championship meet. So uh, those runners did well. Tennis continued to improve under Coach Chatlack. Right. And then uh, our women's golf team finished third. Uh, in, the, in the conference, so that was uh, you know a pretty strong showing on that part. Uh, as you mentioned, with volleyball, they're still going strong. Uh, I think we've uh, got the number three seed in the upcoming tournament. Uh, looking forward to that action down in Charleston next week, and hopefully we can win a couple of ball games. And uh, we're right on the fringe of the NCAA regional tournament, so uh, we're not in. But uh, you know, certainly if we win the tournament, we get the AQ, so that we're in there. But uh, if we can get to the final game against Wheeling, uh, see, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be there. And then we have uh, soccer programs. Men's soccer struggled this year, but they did find a way to get into the conference tournament. Uh, the women's soccer team, ironically, won more games this year since we've been Division II, uh, since we became active members in the NCAA, but they just narrowly missed out. They were in third place and uh, lost the game by a goal and fell right out. Yeah, uh, they so finished, I believe, 10-7-1, and one, and they yeah, missed the playoffs ex somehow. Exactly. They were the third seed heading into the final ball game against Concord, lost 2-1, and by virtue of everybody being stacked up, we fell to seventh place on one goal. So uh, very disappointing for those young ladies uh, in that program. And then obviously we've had our struggles with football, and um, hopefully this is just a, you know, a minor setback and we can you know, right the course. When you move into the PSAC next year. Chris, I want to ask you one final thing. Uh, you made a couple of coaching hires. Brian Tucker, your new wrestling coach, and Paul O'Brien, your new softball coach. Paul, I know, was hired earlier in the offseason. I know, Brian, you had to kind of scramble together, I guess, to, to kind of hire him. Talk about what both of those guys bring to the table and, and why the administration decided to uh, to hire them. Okay. Well, we start with Paul uh, first, and so he was hired before Brian. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Paul comes to us. He's a, a longtime uh, softball coach. Uh, uh, with a, a vast array of experience, both at the high school level and the college level. He is a product of Catholic education, taught and coached softball at uh, Catholic high schools in Maryland, it was a head coach, travel ball coach, all of those things. And most recently, he was an assistant coach at Shippensburg. 
Uh, so Paul is certainly very familiar with PSAC softball, but we didn't know we were going there when yeah. we hired Paul, but it looked, we look pretty smart now. Uh, yes, you did. You knew now. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, but Paul brings some maturity, I think, to our softball program. Uh, hopefully it's going to bring stability to the program that we've had a couple of coaches over the past couple of years. So uh, the young women in, involved in that team need that. Um, I've had nothing but great reviews from everybody concerning Coach O'Brien uh, this fall, during the fall ball season, the players are happy, excited. So uh, we're looking forward to the spring, and he's doing a great job. Uh, and he, he got to show off his public address announcing skills last week. I think he showed you up a little bit at the football game, well, just to let you know. Yeah, well, uh, that's up to, up to debate. You know, I caught a couple <laughs> of mistakes there, so. I ended know, the debates. I ended it. You know, so I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> uh, talk about what Brian Tucker brings to the table. Brian, Brian uh, is our new head wrestling coach. And um, it was an unexpected. Our former coach, Chris Elliott, uh, resigned at the beginning of the school year. And uh, so we put the wheels in motion to, to, you know, to replace him. And uh, we had several strong candidates apply, interviewed several strong candidates. And uh, Brian was just, uh, he, he rose above, you know, uh, those that we interviewed. Uh, Brian comes to us from Bloomsburg, another PSAC school, but they're Division I in wrestling at Bloom. And so he's got that experience working with you know, a great mentor out there. But uh, Brian is extremely organized, uh, very into wrestling. And you know wrestlers are into wrestling. And, uh, you know, Brian has that. Uh, the kids have responded well to him. Um, he just a ton of energy and excitement. And uh, they're actually on their way to today, today up at the uh, Mount Union tournament. So we'll see how it shakes out for him. I know we don't have as many wrestlers as we'd like to have right now, so we're going to be giving away some – uh, some points in terms of scoring, but, uh, you know, I'm anxious to see him, you know, go. Very good. And, uh, of course, the winter sports coming up as well. Men's basketball team got a nice win in the exhibition season. Right, right. A lot is expected. Uh, I think the women have a lot of potential. And, of course, uh, the wrestling team as well. So we're looking forward to the winter sports. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, both hoop teams uh, uh, have had a great preseason. You know, uh, they've done well in their exhibition games, but, you know, that's what they are, their exhibition game. So hopefully the, both those programs can stay healthy and uh, have a great winter for us and make a run in our last year in the WVIC, a, a trip to Charleston and playing some basketball late in the year. Chris, it's been a pleasure the last three right. seasons to yeah. be able to cover you guys. I, I can say from the entire staff, the Westmoreland Sports Network, it's been uh, a big pleasure, and all the coaches and student athletes have given their time to us so graciously, and uh, we're just so happy to have this partnership, hopefully for many years to come, and, and you're the reason for it, and we, yeah. we appreciate it. Well, thank you, Dan, and uh, we certainly appreciate all the effort that you've done you know, for us as we've grown this uh, partnership. Uh, from the first year to doing a couple of games to gradually expanding and increasing from football to basketball and now volleyball and baseball. Uh, so it's great. I think you guys and your staff do a fantastic job promoting Seton Hill Athletics, covering Seton Hill Athletics, and you do a great job on the high school side too, you know, promoting the, these great student athletes in Westmoreland County. Well, thank you, Chris. And uh, our ratings will stay the same as long as you don't do any color commentary. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's how it's going to be. All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Snyder, Seton Hill University Athletic Director. We'll be back on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this.